what we're going to do is take a devotional look at psalms, which at different times, I know different psalms people have heard before and probably thought of it and sang it or had a study about it and got really into it. But I'm praying that maybe as treated as a devotional, when you take maybe a few minutes to think about what the words say and how God is speaking to you directly, that maybe it'll apply in a emotional way to cause you to turn your heart and the attention of your spirit to God, maybe in a more intimate way that you hadn't thought of before, that hopefully in all of these eight devotionals that God is speaking to you and causing you to hear him in a more real way so that one day you will hear his voice, even as I have, and I'm sure that there are thousands out there that definitely have heard God speak, much less just read it and then understood God speaking through his word, but also understood inside they could hear his still small voice. But there is a time and place where God will speak audibly. He will literally, even as the Bible says, speak directly to you. And when he does, there is no doubt you will listen. Psalms, book one. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, whithersoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. You know, I'm so thrilled because God puts right in here something that I see as being very important that we do as Christians, and maybe you'll say you haven't, but then let me say I have, and that is... I've sat in the seat of the scornful. In other words, have you ever attacked someone? Have you ever looked at some other person's faith and said, oh no, they're wrong. You scorned them because they were not like you. They didn't understand the scriptures. They weren't as wise as you. They didn't have the full counsel of God like you. In reality, didn't you scorn them when they may have not learned as much as you? I have. And I have found in my life that when I have done those things, that those things have come back to challenge me because God has said, look, this is my child that I died for. So what are you doing scorning and being in the seat of the scornful? Wouldn't you rather be blessed because you're not walking in the counsel of the ungodly? Godliness does not choose to make itself a separate entity and then pick on others that are ungodly. Godliness chooses to take the salvation of Jesus Christ, who does not condemn the world, but rather chooses to elevate his sanctification process that is caused in the hearts of someone who falls in love with God and desires for them to be changed by God himself so that they would become closer to the one and object of their love than it would be to try to perform any kind of righteousness and right acts by making a form of godliness that denies the very person of God himself in the person. You see, you can't be godly. You just can't. You're not God. But when God is in you, then you have godliness. And when you are full of love, because God is love, you are full of God. That is how godliness is accomplished in you, by the person of Jesus Christ causing you to be a, a right dwelling place for his spirit to be in you. So his delight becomes the law of the Lord because then the Lord shows the direction with which a person should turn their life. Because then it's not the law of God or the law of Moses, but the law of the Lord. And the law of the Lord was what? Love your neighbors. It was so epitomized when he said on the Sermon on the Mount. Love your neighbor. Love your enemies. Love those who despitefully use you and miserably persecute you. Why? Because anyone can be loving those that love. Of course. 
Someone who loves me, I fall in love with. But do you love those who don't love you? Do you care for those who don't care for you? The law of the Lord is something you have to think about. And think about that when you do. Because the Lord Jesus is your Lord. And that is the law of the Lord. So, would you be like a tree planted that you are giving forth shade to those who need it? Or are you like a tree that's going to be knocked over in the wind and crush those who are under it? The choice is yours, because if your roots are firmly grounded in the Word of God, then you know that God is love. And you know that Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but He came that salvation might be brought to the world through Himself being alive and living in the hearts and minds of men and women. And when a man and woman of God is so in love with Him, then He is able to use that life to touch others in a merciful way to bring grace and salvation to the person who needs it, to be there in a time of need when they call upon the name of the Lord. So are you like that tree, or are you bringing forth fruit and leaf which would not wither, or are you rather a spineling sapling that the branches get blown off and you're liable to kill someone by accident because some weird growth that you've had has broken off in the wind and it's no longer strong and it comes and snaps and destroys things. But the ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. So when you're weighing in your life what you are and becoming, then recognize that the winds will blow upon the godly and the ungodly, that God will blow upon your house to see whatsoever it stands. Are you like the pigs that big built the house out of wood, hay, and stubble? Or are you building it out of brick or out of rock? Jesus said these sayings of mine, that when the storms of life came, they would be built upon a rock and they would be sound and sure. Is that not what Psalms is saying here? Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, because the ungodly can't be in judgment, because they don't know how to judge. They only see the outward things, and they only manifest that which they automatically do. They don't know how to be other than what they are, which is unrighteous, which is ungodly. So they will not be in that judgment. They are already judged. And they are already cast aside. And in the congregation of the righteous, then we do not look for those people who seem or appear to be ungodly because they are learning and being brought into a process of godliness by with which the love is causing them to change and to develop. So God has already said that those that are in the congregation are not the ones you're looking at. You're looking at those that are outside the congregation. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God knows, God sees, God answers, and God moves. And in Psalm 1, it is obvious that we are blessed because we're not walking in that way, but we're walking in the way of the law of the Lord, which is love. And if you find love in Psalm 1, you finally found the results of what Jesus does when he puts himself into the Psalms that David cried out by saying, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Don't scorn your brethren. Don't scorn those whom you should not be scorning, but bringing salvation to. For if you do, then you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose fruit bringeth forth in its season, and its leaf also shall not wither, and anything and everything you do will prosper, because you're pointing to Jesus. Where does a tree point? Where does a plant go? To the sun. It points in the direction of the sun. And that's where you need to be. And that's what Book 1, Psalm 1 is all about. Jesus, in the midst thereof, in the fullness of the revelation of the scriptures, as Jesus said, look, in the volume of the book it is written of me, and in the volume of Psalm 1 it is Jesus.